Our dear viewers and listeners, we welcome you to today's Bible study. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. Before we open up today's word, let's say a word of prayer. And Pastor Nathan will lead us. Father, we thank you. All glory, all honor, all power is yours. We bless your name, King of glory, because you're here in our midst. We thank you for the blessing of your word. And as it goes out, Father, it goes with power to change lives, to raise people, to make a difference in this generation. Father, we're excited for what you're doing today. And for that, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <coughs> So our viewers and listeners, uh, what we broke off last week, John had been given a scroll to read. And the instructions had been very profound. That this scroll, once he ate it, it would be bitter in his stomach. But it would be sweet in his mouth. And after eating the scroll, we then observe that John seems to be a mere observer. He now became a participant in God's agenda. For thereafter, God told him to prophesy again to many people, to nations, to tongues, and to kings. So eating this little book involved him taking in and assimilating in his system the word that was written. So it became a part of his tissues. And this, we said, is the prerequisite to witnessing for Christ. We observe that he ate the entire book. He did not Cherry pick, he did not pick up a section and eat that and then leave the rest aside. The implication for that is that when we are taking in the word of God, we take the entire word of God. It's not like you are having a buffet. When you have a buffet, you pick what you want. And, and some others you leave. On the table. When it comes to the word of God, you take it in its entirety. That is when you will be an effective witness for Christ. As we get into today's word, I want us to, I want to re-emphasize one word that is often overlooked when we look at the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That is a fact that is often hidden. Or it is often overlooked. And when you overlook the fact that it is Jesus that is being revealed, then you get into so many arguments that are unnecessary. And you lose the matter of fact that the intention of God when revealing this book we are to reveal to us Jesus Christ. So for today's text, I would like us to open the book of Revelation. Chapter 11. And we shall read from verse 1 to verse 3. But our emphasis will be on the first two verses. Let's read. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod. And the angel stood, saying, 
Rise and measure the temple of God. The altar. And those who worship there. But leave out the leave out the court which is outside the temple. And do not measure it. So Torupima. For it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy. 1,260 days. Clothed in sackcloth. That is a text that we have today. As we get into the word of God. Here we are still in the period of the interlude between the sixth and the seventh trumpets. And John is now a participant. He's not just mere reporting. He's actively involved into what God is revealing to us. And because he's is involved, there is handed to him a reed like measuring rod with the instruction to rise and measure. Now the instruction to arise and measure is given a restricted area with which is to measure. He's not measuring the entire temple area. No, he's given to measure the temple of God with the altar and the people that are there. Now, this is very interesting. Because this read was a, tubul a tubular kind of read that grows in the Middle East. And it is often used as a staff. Yet it can actually be written down to a writing pen. If we read Third John chapter, Third John verse thirteen, it is quite light in weight. And when we read Ezekiel fourteen. All the way 41, 42, and 43. We see this same kind of read being used to measure the temple. So why measure the temple? Because when you measure something, you are placing ownership upon it. If there is a dispute between two people regarding a property or a piece of land, a surveyor is called in. And the reason they are called in is to measure and determine who owns what. And once that has been determined, then whatever discussion ends there. Because either party now knows what they own. So you cannot go to somebody else's property and begin to measure it. It is only your property that you can measure. So by God then sending John out to measure this area of the temple. He is sending a very clear message that this belongs to me. It is intended for my use. It is God that is laying claim on this particular area. Now, there are so many views with regard to this text concerning the temple 
Echi kwa atadana kujieka alenu. There are at least four views that scholars have come up with. Aba so yuwa Bible baina, eh, baina kutegira kwa mga mbirundi, mbirundi ina. With regard to the temple that John was measured. Gabo gira kujieka alenu yukana jiani. Number one, some scholars believe. Aba mba kilizanti. That the, this temple that is listed in John Revelation 11 is the Millennium Temple. Now, this does not seem to sync with the entire text. Because when we read the text in its entirety, we discover that this temple is going to become desolate. Now the Millennium Temple cannot be this way. So this assumption is not correct. There is the other assumption or school of thought that this temple is spiritual. And reference is drawn to 1st Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 where Paul writes to the church and he says don't you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you and they hold that this is actually a spiritual temple, not a literal one. What they overlook is the second part of verse 1. John is taught to rise and measure the temple of God. The altar and those who worship there. So the temple cannot be my body. Because then how do you describe those who worship there? So also that assumption does not fit this particular The third one is where this is referred to as the heavenly temple. But again, that does not fit the description. Because he's required to also measure those who worship in it. So this temple was literally on earth. According to the vision. And again, the heavenly temple will never be made desolate. So the fourth assumption or the fourth school of thought is that this temple is real, it is literal and will be constructed before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe this is the assumption that holds true to this text. And in this text, God is claiming ownership. He's not only just claiming ownership to the temple, but he's also measuring the value, the worth, and the structure based on the standards he has set. Or based on the standards that he has determined. You see, today in the world, there is so much contestation with regard to what is the best mode of worship. Or who worships God the way, the best way. The question we are not asking ourselves is who are we worshiping and what is the standard that he has set for us to worship him. 
Jesus clarified this in John chapter 4. Yes, When he's talking to the woman at the well, he tells the Samaritan woman that the time is coming and is now. When God's people will not worship him on this mountain or on that mountain. He says God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. For the Father desires such as this. So God has already set the standard that if we are to worship him, then we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So anything short of that does not meet his standard. So this provides a very important lesson for us that regardless of the magnificence of our structures or how elaborate our ceremonies are, or how refined our activities are or how nice the programs are with which we execute our services or how smartly dressed and eloquent our ministers are or how vibrant our services are the test of whether this meets the criteria is based on the standard that God has set. Otherwise, all our activities will either meet rejection from God or will amount to loss on our part. Praise be to God. And we see that in scripture all the way from Genesis. When Cain and Abel came before God to present sacrifices. And the Bible says that God had regard on Abel and his sacrifices. Listen to that. On Abel and his sacrifices. And he had no regard on Cain and his sacrifices. So it is very important for us to understand that God has set a standard. So it is not about what we come up with. We have to come back and reevaluate whether that meets the standard that God has set. It is the same thing with prayer. It is the same thing with our kind of life that we conduct ourselves. God has set a standard for every parameter of the life of every Christian. And by this, we understand also that God is giving us assurance that he is taking note of those who faithfully worship him. So from this text we understand that the temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt and the Jews will offer sacrifices there as they did in the times before Christ and following after Christ. But this will follow a treaty between Israel and the beast of the revived Rome that we will see as we go on in the next chapter. And this has been revealed according to Daniel chapter 9. Verse 27 points that out. And it is in this very temple 
That the man of sin or the man of lawlessness, the one who opposes God and exalts himself above every other God to such an extent that he takes a seat in the temple of the Lord which God decrees in Ezekiel 43 that this shall be his seat forever and he displays himself as being God as described to us by Paul in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4 when he does that, this is what the Bible calls the abomination of desolation. It is what Daniel prophesies in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. Jesus also talked about the same incident. In Matthew chapter 24, from verse 15 to verse 21, and from that point onwards, once he sits upon the throne in the temple of Jerusalem, Jerusalem will come under siege from Gentile powers, as described to us in Zechariah chapter 12 from verse 2 to 4. And it is at this point that we see the rejection. Why God then decides that the temple cannot go beyond the altar. But why are we going to this text? Why is this so important? Because it fits in what is happening right now. Because presently as we stand, there is no temple in Jerusalem. The last temple was destroyed in 70 AD. By a general called Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, he surrounded Jerusalem. And nobody was getting in or out. It was such a critical moment for the town that historians write that the people in the city had to eat their children in order to survive. No wonder Jesus looks at Jerusalem and weeps over the city and says Jerusalem, Jerusalem if you only knew the things that bring you peace how I wanted to brood over you like a chicken brood over her young ones. <laughs> this is Christ foretelling what would happen to Jerusalem and how their children were eaten by the parents. Praise be to God. When we read scripture and we go back and correct it with what actually happened, it brings to us an understanding that Jesus is coming back soon. Because if a certain point of scripture has been fulfilled, like I told you the last time round, that there are over 300 promises relating to the Messiah in the Old Testament. And about a hundred of them have been fulfilled in the New Testament. We still have about 200 scriptures that are not yet fulfilled. If the hundred were 
literal fulfill. Kati wabanga ya malo kutu kiliza evi ya wandiki wa chikumi. Then the 200 will be literal fulfill. Bine evi kumi ya bibi na wabijia kutu kilizi kwa. And for that we need to be excited about the times that we live in. Ile echo chitule eto kusanyuka orevi seda vya tulimu. Because currently as we stand. Mubidobe vya tulimu kakati. On the temple mount or on mount moraya. Kati kurusozo oro mount morayo. The place where. Abraham took Isaac to sacrifice. Also, Zoro Ibrahim we are told Isaac will come to And God promised that He would provide the sacrifice. The ajaga bilida sadaka. When Isaac asked Abraham, Isaac we have used the tatar way. I see the firewood. The tatar and that we Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will. Ibrahim na mudamu nti katonda jagga bilira and when he tried to sacrifice his son era we ageza ko kuwayo mwana wenga sadaka God stopped him katonda yamuyimiriza and provided a lamb yena wa yendi mwana gwendika thousands of years later ere myaka lukubi we jaita God took his son katonda na kwato mwana wo mujaka on the same mountain era ku lusozi lwe lumuru Calvary Calvary this time naye mukasera ka for our sin Omwana we atufirira ebibi bya febyo nda. There was no angel to stop it. Tewali wo malaika yali amwemesa. Because it was necessary that this be carried out. Chali chigwanira ekintu kino kubera. Currently on this temple mount. Kati olusozi lundo. There are two significant buildings. Wali we bizimbe bibiri ebikuru. One of them ekimukwecho is the Islamic Al-Aqsa Mosque. Gwe muziki to gwa basilamu gwe baita Al-Aqsa. And the second one is the dome of the rock it is this building that has a big golden dome and bright blue sides now these buildings constitute a problem to many people with regard to where the temple mount will be built where the temple will be built because currently as we speak the muslims control this temple mount and jews and christians are not allowed to worship there now the temple mount is regarded as the third most sacred site of the Islamic faith. The Islamic faith has got about four critical sites according to their faith. The first one is Mecca, which has the Kaaba inside the Masjid al-Haram. The second one is Madina, Madina, where you have the Al Masjid Al Nabawi. The third one is where the Al Aqsa Mosque is. The fourth one is the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus. Now back to what we talked about on the Temple Mount. I would like to take you back that even the Muslims before used to pray facing Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was the kibu. Now they pray facing Makkah. Those are reasons I will not explain. But the tradition of the Muslims is that Muhammad miraculously traveled to Jerusalem by night and ascended from the Temple Mount into heaven. So they regard this site as dear to them. Now I want to point out some study that we have done with regard to a certain Jewish engineer whose name is Asha Kaufman. Now this Jewish engineer has done an exhaustive work 
Yingini yono muyudaya ya kolo kuno nyerezo kwe chikecha Which you can go and research on your own. Na wosu polo genda nono nyereza. In trying to locate where the original temple was. Gageza wako kusinzi no kulaba yeka alene ya soka ya liwa. And his findings have blown so many people. Ilabi ya zula bie uunisa. He has proved beyond any doubt. Ya leto ubukaka futa sobo la kwega. And to the satisfaction of many people. That actually the original temple is not where the dome of the rock is. It is north to where the dome is. Now, this is very important because look at what happens. When we talked about the first seal, that was broken. We talked about the Antichrist rising. Later we will see that he will broke a peace between Israel and its neighbors. Now the desire of Israel is to build a temple on the temple mount. But remember the place where the outer court is supposed to be. That is the place where the dome of the rock sits. In the book of Revelation, when God is marking out this distance, he tells John, rise and measure the temple of God. The altar and those who sit there. But leave out out the court which is outside the temple. So in the event that this is constructed, the outside court will have already been sealed off and given to the nations which are the Islamic nations. So in its reconstruction it would perfectly fit scripture to the very dot according to what God has shown John. Why am I giving you all this? Because this helps you to understand that the God we serve for every word he has put in this world he is all wise he knows events before they ever come to pass. He sees the end from the beginning. And he has determined the destinies of men. Before we ever set foot on this planet. And there is nothing that is currently going on. That is outside his scope of understanding or that he has not permitted to happen. So what does that speak to you and I? In the time that we are living here, it calls us to get back to read this book. To read this Bible with understanding and allow the Spirit of God to guide us in this truth because the Bible tells us that God follows his word to perform it. He says to us in Isaiah that as the rain comes down and the snow in the wind and does not return there. But waters the ground that it may cause it to bud, that it may give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. He says, so is my word that comes out of man. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish that which I send it to. And it shall prosper there. 
Era chijja ku chijja kola chonna che chosoke. God still follows his word to date. And there is no word of God that will fall to the ground. You see, the challenge with us, we think God does not mean what He says. The fact is, He means every word He has said. And he will in his time fulfill everything that he says. Here he is talking about the rebuilding of the temple. And here again we see something very profound. He tells John that these Nations will tread upon the holy place for 42 months. And he says, and then I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sacrifice. Now we we'll talk about the two witnesses next week. But I want you to see something here. 42 months and 1,260 days is the same period. Forty-two months is equal to 1,260 days. But why does God, when He is speaking concerning the heathen, talk about 42 months? And then when He comes to talk concerning His prophets, concerning His people, He's talking about days. You see, when God is speaking concerning His people, he wants to address it to the very detail. Today is. When he's speaking to the broader scope, he reveals it in months. You see, many people have come and asked that at what time then will the church go up? Will it go before or after these events? As a matter of fact, I don't know. Why? Because the Bible does not tell us. When John is revealed what we read here, he is standing at the point of eternity where time does not count. And the events that he reveals to us are in the period called time. Now imagine somebody standing in eternity receives the revelation and the revelation concerns time. So now for us who want to see it chronologically placed. But we forget that the revelation was given to him when he is taken in the spirit at a place where time does not come. So many people try to calculate back forth and end up losing it. Because we focus on the wrong thing. Our focus should be on the revelation of Jesus Christ. And what is expected of us between now and when he shall appear. So we should be like the children of Israel who had understanding of the times and what Israel ought to do. So similarly, we as the saints of God need to understand the times we live in and what is expected of us now and when Christ shall appear. So once we have that understanding, then our lives will be easy. Otherwise, we will come to 
a situation where we become like the ten virgins that the Bible talks about when Jesus narrated the parable in Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13 and he says five of them were foolish and the five foolish ones had lamps but they did not carry oil with them and the five wise ones had lamps but they had oil with them they were in expectancy they were on the watch out. They did not know the time. But they carried oil with them. And when the trump was sounded, that the bridegroom had come in, what had happened? The five were not there. Why? Because they were not ready. And when they came, the Bible says the door had been shut. And when they, they called to the bridegroom, he said, go away, I don't know. And Jesus said, in verse 13, he says, watch therefore. For you neither know the day, Know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. So if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have to be in the Lord's house, in the Lord's vineyard, working for the Lord. Watching, witnessing to the truth of this gospel. Because any time we either, he either comes up and we rise up to meet him or we go to meet him before he comes. So, on the side of time, we still have work to do. Now, for you who does not know him as Lord and Savior, what awaits you is something beyond what we can describe in terms of terror. It is destruction beyond what we can imagine. It is pain beyond what any human has known. But there is a way out. Jesus says in John chapter 14 and verse 6 I am the way I am the truth I am the life no one comes to the Father except through me there is a way out and that way is Jesus and today not tomorrow. Today, right now, you can get your life on track. Jesus said, I am the truth. You can know the truth. Jesus said, I am the life. You can have life. He said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you may have life and have it more abundant. Right now, Jesus will come in your life. If only you can open your heart to him. If you can acknowledge that you are a sinner lost and in need of his saving grace, he will come in. He will change your life. And he will guarantee your destiny. God has a standard. And that standard is Christ. Without Christ, everything falls below standard. Today, now, you can accept Jesus in your life. And your life can be saved for you. If you have never been on this path, you can take it right now. 
It's joining prayer. Believe from the bottom of your heart. And by the end of this prayer, you will be saved for all eternity. Let's pray. Father, Tata, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I am in need of saving. I need a savior in my life. I need a redeemer. I need a shepherd. I need a friend. I need a God who can come through for me. I need a God who can guarantee eternity. Lord Jesus, you died at Calvary and shed your blood for my sins. Today, I invite you in my life as the Savior and as the Lord of my life. From this day forward, I pray and ask you, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide every step of my journey forward. I will not be ashamed of you before friends before men. And I declare today that I am born again. Thank you Lord for saving me. Thank you Lord for putting me on this path of righteousness. Thank you Lord because now my name is written in the book of life. When I depart from this body, I will be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 The Bible tells us that as many as received to them he gave the power to become the children of God. We thank you. And your word affirms that if any man is in Christ he is a new creation. The old has gone. Before all things have become new. Strengthen them Lord. Heal those that are hurting. Uphold those that are not king of God. Comfort those that need comfort. Those that are in hopeless situations. Open a way in their way that is Lord. Those are in desert places of their lives. Calls an outflow of abundance to come to them. I pray for a testimony upon their lives. That this day. When they received you in their hearts, their lives were changed for all eternity. Be glorified, Lord of God. Precious Holy Spirit. Baptize them. Baptize them. them. Guide them. Lead them. To the way of truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, at this point in time, we're going to pray for those who are afraid. The Bible tells us, Bible is there anybody afflicted? Let them pray. We're going to join in hands in prayer. We're going to join together in prayer. And believe God for that situation that seems impossible in your life. The Bible says that with God all things are he declares in his word. He says, Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything to have? God has placed a challenge before. He says, Tell me, is there anything to have for me? What do we think that is which is the Sobola Kola? I want us to believe God for that which has seemed impossible. Forget the time it has spent. Forget the chaos it has caused in your life. I want you for once to forget about 
the connections that it has caused you and taken you so far back from your destiny. I, I want you to focus on this. That Jesus says in his word that I am come that you may have life and have it more abundant. That abundant life is coming your way. Let's join our hearts in prayer and believe God for that which you think is impossible. This is the only thing I want you to do after. When God has fulfilled that which we have believed him for, there is a line on the screen. Please, call, testify of what God has done in it may be a health challenge. It will, you will be healed in Jesus' name. Is it a promotion you are believing for? From the east and the west, promotion does not come. The Bible says God is just. He raises one. And he puts down another. So don't worry about people. God is the promoter and the Bible tells us he is no respect of person what he has done for someone he will do for you he is the same yesterday, today and for you Father in the name of Jesus will come in faith believing with those people that are watching us with those that are hearing us over the radio. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Your people are in desperate situations. Your people are in desperate need. We need you to come through, Lord. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, where they are facing health challenges, your word affirms that by the stripes of Jesus we are here. Therefore, we speak healing from the heads to the toes of their feet to every organ of their lives. We speak healing right now in the name of of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, to that one that is afflicted, be healed in the name of Jesus, to that one that has lost his peace, we speak the peace of God upon your life, to them that are tormented by demons, and forces of wickedness, we speak that no weapon that is white war against you that will prosper, we command every Spirit. We command every force of darkness to scatter in seven directions. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, we speak healing right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak your freedom right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call forth that promotion in Jesus' name. We call forth abundance where there is scarcity. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Thank you, Father. Because you are providing exceedingly abundant above what we are asking, Lord. King of glory and Lord of honor, we give you praise and we thank you because it is well with your people. You have set them free. You are providing for their every need. You are raising them up. To the glory, the honor, and the fame of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's meet again. Have a wonderful week. Shalom.